But do we have a sense of how we we know the ho homeless the houseless issue is huge in many places? Do we we do we know about the scale of it here locally? How many people are we talking about? Uh, I mean, depending on what estimate you look at. I mean, the last one I saw, I think just in Eugene alone, I think we had uh, somewhere around four thousand unhoused folks. Four thousand. Um, and nearly half of all Oregonians are a paycheck away from being right there with these people. Um, Eugene, uh, last I checked, has the highest number of unhoused people uh, per capita anywhere in the United States. And this is not just a Eugene issue. This, I mean, we see this in other cities in our district, um, even our smaller towns. We've seen in California this uh, month uh, Gavin Newsom starting to take a hard line against the unhoused and uh, kind of you know, cleaning out, forcing people to move out of their camps and uh, gathering up their belongings and I guess taking them. Uh, is that is that happening here? Uh, what, what's been the response? Like, is it still very visual, visible, uh, the camps? And are, are they being displaced, the camps? They're repeatedly swept. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're trying to uh, get the city to do is to stop sweeping these people. Um, what happens is they show up, they sweep, their camp, they throw away a good chunk of the stuff that, they're, uh, that they depend on to survive on the streets, and then they just are forced to go find somewhere else to try to camp, uh, inevitably get swept again a few days later, lose more of their belongings. These aren't, these aren't real solutions, and this is all sort of like, you know, this was happening even before the SCOTUS decision, Grants Pass versus Johnson, uh, which is, you know, made it even easier to criminalize being unhoused. So, um, yeah, I don't believe we should be criminalizing folks for just being poor, basically. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, even in uh, our Democratic-run cities. What, um, I, I think that I read on your site and in other places that you have been penalized for speaking up on the Gaza issue um, in, ac in your academic uh, setting. Uh, have you been uh, placed on hold with your academic uh, profession? Or what, what is that, what exactly happened there? Yeah, so uh, in May, like on the, we were involved, the faculty and staff were involved in supporting the student encampment uh, on the university's campus. And uh, as part of that, I called for the university to divest, just as the students were doing. Um, and I asked for folks to withhold donations until they took our concerns over the ethics of their investments seriously. Um, and rather than do that, they placed me on paid administrative leave on May 21st. Um, and then they finalized my termination on July 31st. So you've been terminated. I've been I've been terminated from my from my position. Are yes. you getting legal advisement about that? I I'm, I haven't given some legal advice. Uh, it's hard to find a lawyer, and it's quite quite frankly, it's hard to uh, afford afford a lawyer uh, on what I made at the university, which was not much. Um, they placed me in another role. I'm not sure why they did that, but I'm I'm again employed with the university but in a different capacity uh, i'm not sure i can only speculate as to why they decided to do that um is there afraid of per perhaps some some lawsuits or something like that are you aware of if the way they handled that situation uh i mean are they even on legal grounds with the way they handled that situation the the school uh i mean i, I think that's sort of open to interpretation right now okay um, yeah i don't i don't know that it's you know, it would, would have been 100% legal what they did, but um, yeah, that's something we can explore with, with some of the lawyers. But I did have law faculty helping me out throughout that process. Um, they advised me, um, a couple really great individuals, um, you know, uh, Cheney Ryan is one of them. He's a professor emeritus, uh, also works for Oxford University, very smart man, and was extremely helpful in helping me navigate that whole process. And, and it's, Probably, probably because of his help that I was able to get placed in this other uh, temporary role. Okay, so, so, they've, so they've given you an alternate position. It's maybe not what you would like to be doing, but it's an alternate for now. Right. And then have they given any indication that in the future your, your original situation might be restored? Or are they putting any terms on it, like stop protesting and we'll give you your hat back or, you know? Right. Um, yeah, it was basically over a uh, Facebook post when I was encouraging people to sort of put pressure on them to divest. And that was like the reasons they gave for my termination, which is kind of silly. Uh, so they pointed... Coming by. Okay. 
So they pointed to your social media posts and then used that to justify action against you? Yes, that's 100% of the reason why they did it. That was okay. we asked to them for them to be specific on which uh, rules I supposedly violated and what the evidence was for that. Um, that and who, was what they pointed to. whose rules are they saying you violated? They were saying, I mean, they gave me a list of things that was just, I, I, I really question. I think it, some of the things that they said I violated, I think it's a bit of a stretch to claim that I violated those things. So they gave you a written notice of what action they were taking? Yeah, the first notice they gave me was very vague. Okay. They just said I, I, I violated numerous policies. Um, so so school policies school, or some kind of policies. Yeah. So, so they're so they're not being very clear about it. Yeah, they well we asked them to be clear and they were a little bit more clear. We had them put that in writing for us. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, if I you can do share have you. so if you get lawyers involved you've got a uh, paper trail. I, we do. Okay, good. We do. We've been now, we've been documenting everything and we've asked them to put everything in writing for us. So uh, how is the best way for voters to get a hold of you if they want to help out with the campaign and get the word out? Yeah, um, well, they can uh, they can email us, um, Justin at justinforcongress.org, uh, the number four, Justin at justinforcongress.org. You can also check us out on our socials. We have a Facebook page, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, all, all the major socials, um, Twitter, you can find me on there too. Feel free to message me, there's a good chance that I'll see it. Um, we're, we're a small campaign, but we're, we're doing the best we can. Obviously, you know, Val Hoyle spent $2.5 million on the last election. We're going to be massively outspent, but um, we're, we're going to try to be as creative as possible to get the word out. So you have, so the general is in November, and you have one opponent or more than one opponent? We have more than one opponent. So last time I checked, I'm the only uh, alternative to the two major parties that are owned and operated okay. by billionaires and corporations. So the incumbent Val Hoyle, uh, who I've already mentioned, and then her Republican opponent uh, is Monique to Spain. All right. So right now it's just the three and of us. Has uh, there been any word about a, a joint appearance, like a debate or a forum? And would they appear with you in it? We, we haven't uh, officially asked for one yet, but we, we do intend on pushing for one, um, sending, you know, we're going to have many people sign a petition to uh, sort of pressure them to engage us in debate. But... Um, you know, I think they're just going to try to ignore our campaign as long as possible. But we did show up to Val Hoyle's fundraiser yesterday. Uh, it's a reminder that um, we're aware of her voting record and we're, we're going to hold her accountable to it. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us today. And, uh, yeah, good luck, good luck on your campaign. I appreciate you have, uh, coming out. Thank uh, you. All right, thank you.